Rolling. Guten Tag and welcome back to Pyre. Um, last episode we actually freed uh, Jodariel. She was, she had mixed feelings, I guess, but uh, that mix was 60-40 happiness, <laughs> I think. And now we have to, well, I guess just go on and free more people. Let's see. Until the turning of the stars, farewell. Liberation rights let your exiles or your adversaries return to freedom. Look to the stars for the next such opportunity. Yes. After the victory of the Tempest and the Liberation Right, re <laughs> I know. Yeah, let's do this again. After your victory over the Tempest and the Liberation Right, you return to your wagon to decide how to proceed from here. Yeah, my son. I don't know what I'm doing to going to do without her here. Well, look at the bright side. It's one less mouth to feed. I would bitch slap you him so kill. hard right now. Yeah. <laughs> well, we'll see Jodariel again if we persevere. Our journey's now begun in earnest. We'll just need to make a few last preparations while we're here. What about the stars? Can we afford the time? About that. Reader. Go see for yourself. The night sky of Mount Alodil is much darker than you would have expected. Your thoughts are with Jodari as you look towards the heavens. You gaze into the darkness of night. I think the game turned up the volume again. Sorry about that. Just check. Yeah, no. I'm just hearing things. <laughs> this didn't happen. And we'll seek our destination. Uh, uh. So... Uh, he's such a troll. Um, I bet he's like, Haha, <laughs> reader, didn't see it. Fucking asshole. <laughs> you search and search the sky, but in vain. No stars are shining now. Whoops. The stars revealed nothing, did they not? <laughs> you confirm his su suspicions. Fucking... It's as the book foretells. This is the chance we need to make ready for what lies ahead. There's a haven south of here we'll travel to at dawn. And when the stars decide to shine for us again, we'll be ready. Mark my words. I think it always looks a bit like he's doing his fingernails when yeah, he's yeah, talking. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, I, I guess, well, yeah, whatever. Let me just... <clears throat> okay, so, yeah, we earned that. And uh, let's talk to Hedwin. You find Hedwin on his own after Lord Darius' liberation. You sense straight away what is, what is on his mind. The two of them were close to much of his life. Yeah, nothing a good moonshine can fix. Jodari, she was a grim, long-time resident of the Downside, grown accustomed to surviving there. She has regained her freedom in the Liberation Rite. Yes, she did. He looks up at you, but his familiar smile is nowhere to be found. Come on, don't, don't fucking yeah, don't do it. I'm sorry, my friend. I should be in a much, much better mood right now. It's just... I can't believe she's gone. Then he shakes his head. Listen to me. I'm talking like she's... He falls silent again. You can tell he needs some time to himself right now and turn to leave. Wait, wait, hold on. Don't leave me here just yet. First of all, my friend, thank you. I don't like to think of it <coughs> in quite these terms, but out of all of us, I really hoped she'd managed to get out of here. Yes, we all did, actually. She's been here the longest. Not to mention I'd probably be dead ten times over by now if not for her. <coughs> What's more, maybe other than Wolfred himself, I have a feeling she's really going to make an impact on this plan of ours. Back on the other side. Yeah. The plan. That's, that's what, uh, what I thought. The plan's current probability of success is 28%. <laughs> Just the same, though. I'm going to miss her. Don't worry, man. We'll see her again. <laughs> you and Hedwin share some members of Jodariel for a time, <coughs> so it grows clear to you that he needs some time alone. Do you remember when she scowled disapprovingly at us? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks again, my friend. I hope that one day all of us can meet again. <clears throat> Jody, she'd be happy one on that day, I bet. It's very late now. Part ways after bidding each other good evening. <laughs> <laughs> very gentlemen. Good evening, Edwin. Good evening, Rina. 
No, oh, she left her rug. Should her status liberated. <laughs> At least you are with us. <laughs> Alright. I guess it's time to continue our journey. <clears throat> Good morning, my girl. The place I noted earlier. Let me illuminate the way. He's more like doing the villain rub with his hands. Like, <laughs> Ah, the Moonlight Alcove. That sounds romantic. A small landing on the dark side of the sacred mountain. Walfred indicates you can await the next cycle of rites here. Let's go there. Is that an airship? Sorry, what? In in front of the balloon. That, that looked like, like an airship with some uh, some some balloons. Uh, where? Where are the wagon stands now? Sorry. Where, the, where are the, our wagon stands? Ah, right. Yeah. Yeah, this. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, leads all of you into a calm and quiet clearing, tucked away inside one of the mountain's hidden folds. All about, you see a variety of strange items and equipment. Ooh, strange equipment. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, someone needs to talk. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> Let's do this. You find Wolfred seemingly lost in thought, but then he turns to you. Oh shit, he noticed oh, us. Greetings, reader. The wagon and I, we've... We've many memories together, and I could not help reliving some of them just now. You know, coming from someone who's made of wood, that's special. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose some aspects of my past may be of relevance to you, given your role. If there is something that you wish to know, you need but ask. Wolf well, invites you to inquire about this, let me tell you about my character. L let's please ask about the Nightwings. As we excuse, not now. Uh, all right. What he did to end the sentence? I guess being an obnoxious prick. Uh, ask about the lone minstrel. Nah. All right. The drama of which you are now a part seems to have a storied history. You express interest in knowing more of how the Nightwings came to be here and Warfred's past connection to the group. Yeah. I have been connected to the Nightwings almost since the beginning of my days in exile. They found me, in a manner as I understand, quite like how Hedwin and the others found you. Back then, it was a smaller group than we have now. I joined an exile called Erisa, another known as Orolak. Erisa, a former exile of the Nightwings who conducted the rites alongside Wolfred and Orolak. Oh, like a former ex of the Nightwings who conducted the rides <laughs> alongside Wolf and Nerissa. Thanks, G. Once in a while, we let little Tizo stand with us as well. He's rather older than, older than he looks. I think he was named Haub or something. <laughs> the other triumvirates we stood against, they feared us. Only the Tempers presented any threat to us in any given right. But... There was a terrible accident. Erisa, we lost her, and Orlek, he was my friend, he... He fell from Mount Elodiel. We lost him as well. One night when he was to be free. Well, what an unlucky coincidence. <laughs> <coughs> we were reckless, hasty, and I was powerless to stop any of it. I blamed the rites themselves, the circumstances that put us into danger. The downside has claimed many lives, yet this, it was too much. I vowed never again to don the mask and raiments. I had the black wagon cleared and buried, such that it could not be used again. Wow, he was like, they were shirking their duty, basically. So, I mean, I get it, but still. If the Nightwings would rise again, it would be under different circumstances, under new leadership and towards a different purpose. That is all I wish to say of this, my girl. Wow, we can ask oh, all the questions. questions. Right, here we go. Um, Let's try. Yeah, in case we only get two, which one's more important? Still the menstrual. All right. You, are <coughs> you ask Walfred about his history with the Lord Minstrel, whom he seems to know quite well. 
Tariq was there with the Nightwings when they took me on. His manner has always been much as how you've seen. <laughs> Although he is somewhat more cheerful now than I recall back then, if you can believe that. I think our plan has sparked a little fire in him. He served the, serves the rites and the Nightwings. I have tried to ask him of his past before, but he seems rather reluctant to speak of it. Though it is plain that he's not from around here. This being the downside, I respect his vicious wishes for some privacy. Nonetheless, although I do not know too much of him, I count him as a friend. I lost track of him for some time, though it was he who first informed me that the Nightwings had returned. He and Tiso were instrumental in our meeting. It's been good to see him doing relatively well. Anyway, was there anything, anything else you wish to talk about for now? Yes. Why are you here? You asked Walford about his past in the Commonwealth and how it is he came to be in the downside. <coughs> how, <did it's> <laughs> how rather forward of you, my girl. Most whom I have met during my travels here have been reluctant to approach the subject of one's history before one's exile. Nonetheless, I am happy to tell you because of course I am. As a reader, I assume you are familiar with the stamping pro- No, I'm not familiar with the stamping press. I owned and operated one. <clears throat> stamping Press, an illegal invention allowing written materials to be published at an extraordinary rate. In 617 AS, the Commonwealth was under siege from within, as anti-theocratic propaganda quickly spread. <clears throat> I took issue with the Commonwealth, the ban on literacy, the interminable wars against the high-wing remnants. I spread the truth about it all with my machine. Under pseudonym, of course. <coughs> My fanfiction name is... <laughs> so, not only does he smoke his own kin, he skins them alive, mushes them into paste and prints words on them. That's kind of serial, serial killer material. Yeah, um, but maybe the paper is made from, I don't know, hemp. That's still plants! Yeah, you eat mammals? Y yeah, sure, but that's different. No, it's not. Well, kinda. Sorta. <laughs> Still, I knew I was putting myself at risk, and sure enough, my stamping press was eventually discovered and burned to the ground. I, however, managed to elude capture for a while. But not for long enough. Here, in the downside, I chanced upon the Nightwings, who were searching for a reader. In that respect, my past, I think, is similar to, to yours. Anyway, that is the long and the short of it. Now then, was there anything else? Uh, Not right now. Yeah, his valuable time. You thank Wolfred for his time and bid him a good rest of the afternoon. Likewise to you, reader. Be well. Uh, okay, cool. So, that was informative. I guess... Now it's time to bide our time. See my daughter. Uh, everyone. The am amenities are modest here at Moonlight Alcove, but I suggest that you get comfortable. We may be here for some time. The Moonlight Alcove, a small land. Uh, we already got that. But mm. for many years, Wolfred smuggled supplies and furnishings to this well hidden locale. Mm. As for myself, I have some business to attend to. <laughs> Please leave the wagon in my care for- No! <laughs> it shall be ready by when you need it next. From the mountaintop, you can see all across the downside. It's impossible expanse staring back at you. The thought occurs to you that you may never see another land besides it. <clears throat> okay. And so, you and your companions wait upon the mountaintop in quiet solitude, anticipating when the cycle of the rides began to turn again. Then. You shall have another opportunity to free one of your own. To unback the freedom one by one. Many moons pass. Jeez. Wow. Then, one evening. May I have a moment, reader? Who are you? What are you doing in my living room? <laughs> the lone minstrel finds you poring over the Book of Rites. Um, as has been your yearning through your stay in this abode. 
I'm begging your pardon, but there is something you may wish to see. Please follow me. You follow me. Follow him into the cold night. Oh my god, he's going to kill us. Look forth, reader, madam. The stars shine like you have never seen. Once more the path to towards salvation is revealed, but now something is different. Oh my. Let's seek our destination. Uh. <clears throat> each time, uh, each prior time you search the stars, they showed you a single path, but now several rides avail themselves to you at once. Alright. Huh. Okay, cool. So, alright, we can't go there now because that's like the main event. And now we can go wherever we want. Yeah, no, we are, we are not. What? We can't go there. No? You are not permitted oh. to con. Alright, fine, jeez. Uh, shit. Where are I? Okay. Ah, the. The rock dog? <laughs> the, who's, oh, snake people. Oh, the old dog. So. You, you wanted to free him? Yeah, but. Uh, Alright, let, let's see. Let's see what happens. The stars urge that we go to a witch of gold. A long way off. Tintaperus? The Warfred, sir. How are we to reach. Uh, 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 Senpai. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> I forgot. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Warfred, Senpai. How are we to reach the Ridge of Gaul in due course of time? You do the round, Master. You know full well, Tariq. Preparations are complete. You think you see the lone mistress smile ever faintly, but you cannot be sure. What's what's with these two? Please ask the others to gather their belongings, rest, and then assemble at the wagon there at dawn. We shall be departing at that time. We are going to fly. What? We are going to fly. Nice. Oh right, because there were balloons. Yeah. Um, as you will, Senpai. The cycle begins anew. As the years advanced, you will find there ought be fewer rides this time, until once more we are to traverse Gripe's Gate. Exactly how many? It is difficult to say, but our next chance at liberty ought to present itself much sooner than before, so let's be ready for it. Now then, see you in the morning, reader. The companions have now traveled far from Blond Alcove. Words of the news soon spread throughout the group. Let's continue our journey. Next morning, Walford calls everyone together before the black wagon. This old wagon is more than it appears. With Bertrude's aid, it has caught you across the sea, to me. Now it shall escort us anywhere the stars require. Come and see. Hmm. Right. Oh my god. Something has changed about the wagon's interior. What looked before to be old cracks and signs of age now expose various intricate components once hidden from view. You are the Nightwings. You should travel in their customary way. He turns to you, indicating levers and devices marked with symbols from the book. Now, reader, whenever you're ready, you may take us up. I'll show you how. <coughs> and everyone else, <laughs> hang on to something. Oh my god. <laughs> After having soared into the sky, the black wagon remains aloft, somehow. <laughs> what do you mean, somehow? <laughs> hey, now we're talking. I can't believe it. By the Underking! <laughs> the Nightwings sail the skies again, wherever the stars may call for them. It looks like he's... he's <laughs> like grappling Sir Gilman's face. Yeah, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> there is one catch. 
The downside provides few locales suitable for landing. Though we should be able to find at least a couple of landing places near to where we're going. We then make way by land or sea toward our destination. Now, without further ado, let us proceed. The black wagon can fly! Uh, uh, okay. Ah, that that's neat. <laughs> Wee. Huh. All right. Holy shit! <laughs> Oi! What the bloody blazes! Oh my god. Baka notices the wagon as his, at his flank here and begins to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, if it isn't the Nightwings flaunting the fancy little flying wagon, I. You think you're better than us, mates, I? Pa, you ain't better than the dung I stepped in last night. Why did you do that? <laughs> no. Get on order here, or I've mind to leap on over there and rip your gizzards out, you hear me? Alright, fine, jeez. <laughs> That's, that's kind of a nice touch, that you can actually meet uh, people out there and they're insulting you and stuff. No, oh, this is... that's neat. Uh, ah, yes, I, I see. I will fly closer to learn more. I... Yandela's no. rich of gold. Somewhat less imposing when viewed from this vantage point. Do you not agree, reader? Dude, it's still like a giant smoking dog face or dragon or whatever. It's, it's still fucking impressive. The myth of the downside holds that, it's, that it is no mere ridge of stone, but the remains of Lord Gandros, once slain by a Gol Golathian himself. Lord Gandroth, the serpent titan vanquished by the scribe Gol Golathanian. He brandished his tower shield and sent Gandroth fury back into the countenance. Into his countenance. And Gold Gothanian, second of the eight scribes of the Book of Rights, known as the Oath Taker or the Repentant. The Empire's Master General entered exile of his own volition to pursue his liege. Though perhaps such states are of little import now, when you stand to confront the fate there in just a short while. Yeah, maybe. Uh, so, how do we actually land? Alright, we can choose. Ooh, yeah. We can also land in Gloomy oh, yes. if you want to. Yeah. Uh, you saw near to the border of the Sand Force where your companions first found you on the downside long ago. <laughs> there is nothing for you there and you would never wish to see it again. Alright, fine. Uh, yeah, I, I went to, uh, to the right. Hmm. Uh, Blooming Pool? Or? Yeah. Huh. Huh. Alright, yeah, yeah, we we can spy on our adversaries or we can do vocations. Uh, I, I didn't want to spy on him, I just <laughs> want to talk. <laughs> um well yeah. then let's go with Hollow Root and see what yeah, happens. Yeah, I I want to talk to I always forget his name. We make a success successful landing in Downside Paris near the southern edge of the downside. Memories of having first met Hedwinder Derry and Brugge come flooding back. No. Your companions assist with a routine inspection of the wagon. Pemmesa reports that the wagon is well intact and did not suffer damage during the flight. That's good. Rookie observes small fractures in the edge of the wing flaps, though on further scrutiny, this proves not to be the cause for much concern. Everything else seems in order. Awesome. The rest of the group got through the flight without incident. You should have some time to explore the vicinity before continuing onward towards Ridge of Gold by land. <coughs> no, it's a good one. Oh, so, few new, so, so much new ch shiny stuff. Um, downside Klinger. You get through from time to time, but only if one says the magic word. Uh, gimme? Gimme, please. <laughs> can we... Can we Pick the truth? Yes. 
Oh. All right. Well, Waking wood with. Wait, 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 but what is that too? Uh, we now have a down barrier in our inventory, and I guess you can sell it. Oh, all right. Uh, waking wood wisps. The wisps inside provide a scarce bit of light when it is needed. All <laughs> <coughs> for a low monthly fee. A keepsake from the Black Basin. And you can poke it. The gr Grease Stone exhibits a flagrant disregard for natural law, thus <laughs> providing light entertainment. A keepsake from Mount Elodio. Uh, hmm. Well, all right. Let's check out the book and then talk to, talk to Sir Gilman. Living in exile. In the words of Yomua Manimane, the Alpha Chief. Once I too roamed free. I remember well those days in which I was called Chief. I travelled all the world over on my four good paws and I was well adored. I wanted to grow stronger. Here at last I have. I shall not mince my words. This place shall either harden you or kill you. It shall haunt you with old memories. You share the exile's plight. My charge is to alleviate the sting of it for you a little bit and to prolong your stay, but only for as long as needed. Your charge is to return. <clears throat> we call this place the downside for a reason, but in time, you can learn to eat, to seek out shelter, and to find a certain beauty in unlikely places. Well, that's positive for a change. <laughs> Speaking of which... Oh, this it's still sparky. Is there more? Forsaken lands. Sheesh. In the words of Molten Steve, the Wild Witch... <clears throat> Years upon long years we spent distilling life essence from many things, which all once writhed under the auspices of their mortality, which we ourselves cut short. In this we have no regrets, for we learned much, and so we think did they. We earned the title Witch, and were first to flee into the downside. Here we encountered solely a myrrh, and soon we gained an understanding of each other. Mm -hmm. He bade us circumnavigate these lands and catalog our findings. We felt a strong desire to expose the secrets of this land. He wished to yield benefit to those who followed in our wake. Indulge us both, both then. Uh, oh shit, there's so much more. Wow. Uh, living exile, uh, celestial land, I, did I skip over something? No, right? Yes, I did. Shit. Um, oh, there's so much stuff. Uh, uh, do we read all that or do we just um, uh, um, inspect the page so um, people can, can pause the video and read it for themselves? We read because it's everything. A lot. <laughs> Is it? So, uh, I don't know. I guess yes. I mean, why the fuck not? Alright, let's see. Yeah, Downside Prairie, in the words of Molten Steve, the Wild Witch. The downside is connected to our realm via a single artery, the river named for our prestigious sap colleague, Luz Glorian. The, that river gushes into seeming nothingness. That seeming nothingness turns out, of course, to be the downside. Its existence undermines thousands of years of thought about the composition of our world. The downside's southern edge we call the Sandfolds. It is a desecrated wasteland. <coughs> speaking well to this land's lack of hospitality. Here, the strength of many who survived the river journey finally fails. If only they could clamber further north, where lies the verdant downside prairie, a better place to perish, to be sure. All right. A uh, yes. That's it for, for this one. Oh, no, it's not. Mount um, Elodio. <laughs> Should I read? Nah, it's fine. In the words of Morton Steve, the Wild Witch, <laughs> gaining the summit of the sacred Mount Elodiel involved no small amount of sacrifice and sorcery in varying proportion. The mountain's energies were palpable, the sensation that we felt indescribable, the lands we stood upon were closer to the stars than the world we knew. It was upon this highest point and all the downside that we first made efforts to concoct this tome. Which you, read, which you now read. It was there that we were stricken with a vision of the cycle of rights and felt together for the first a sense of freedom unlike any we experienced before. But that is a subject which our comrades shall illuminate in greater detail. 
Alright, there's at least here's nothing left. Yeah, great. Next one is the Book of Rights. Okay. In the Book of Rights, in the words of Luce Glory and Hundred Minds, the Scholar, much can be said about the sisters of the Ark, whom we banished the <coughs> great beyond for deeds irredeemable. Suffice, suffice it that the details of their banishment are written in this book. The sisters and the book became inseparable, not unlike the stars, their light and the infinite darkness that engulfs them. The stars communicate to us and you, in turn. The words within this book are but an edifice, a simple surface, Look past the text, to the hidden meaning, to the hidden power. The stars above, as they are not mere lights, these are not mere words. If you chance upon the sisters of the arch within their prison here, give them all thanks. Alright, good. The triumvir- nine triumvir- nine guys. <laughs> At first, uh, in the words of who the swallow, the accursed. So the imp can write. At first, I found it much difficult to read, much less to write, even to grasp the quill. Yeah, but the haunt one, Mur, implored me. He said, "This is the greatest gift that he could give me in return." In return for what? I asked. In return for his life, he said. But I did not save your life. I said. You did, he said. We fight about this still. Mur is stubborn, more than I. Now herein. And by his leave, I chronicle the nine triumvirates, for I am of, his, of this land, unlike the rest, who wish to leave. We knew not everyone could leave who wanted. Yeah? Leave who wanted. Seldom would the opportunity arise. Thus did we organize those striving for the chance into nine sets of three. Alright, cool. And the last one. On Commonwealth. In the words of Trieste, Tithis, the blessed born. We, the eight, assembled here together on the downside, and we gave our freedom, so that you may yet have yours. It is an ex exchange we have not lightly made. It is my charge to ensure that you, should you regain your freedom, first off recognize its qualities and also use it wisely. You do not need a pair of wings in order to be free. My own wings. I once thought that they could take me anywhere, and then they took me here, where I am bound. It is your charge to be free and not to make the same mistakes. Spring from here and learn from what we did and build a new great society, a free society with wings spread wide for everyone. Okay. All right. That's it. <sighs> and off to less grave stuff, I hope. <laughs> so Gilman is shivering here after the Black Wagon's maiden voyage to the skies. Oh shit, it's paralyzing fear of heights. Yeah, about that. <laughs> M Master Reader, this knight is very, very slightly out of sorts, is all. He merely appears terrified, but he assures you that this, his seeming cowardice is but an optical illusion in this case. Tamasa overhears and joins you. Oh my god. Flying's not for everyone, Sir Knight. This knight heartily concurs, though how anyone at all can stand it, he has yet to understand. Well, let's see. What's it like to swim the waters of the Sea Dominion? Ah, those glorious murky waters engulfed in hideous warfare. To be sure, but otherwise a joy to cut across, to feel the coolness of the waves beneath one's gill slits and the like. Though this knight is now accustomed to his life above the surface. Flanks does the same to Sir Knight. It resists those of us not born to it. I, in turn, have wondered what your seals are like, but the sort of swimming fills me with disgust. No. Oh. So... I haven't had to swim, and you now have to fly. That's very brave of you. And you handled it, handled it better than some harp fledglings I've met in my day. No, oh, that's so sweet. You get used to it. She departs, but you sense Sir Gilman is feeling better after the exchange. Woohoo! Nice. There for them. <laughs> cool. All right, right, let's. I guess we will scribe for information in the next episode. Oh no, I wanted to meet old dog snake. <laughs> All right, so um, that's it for the episode, and we'll see you next time. Bye.